Analytical Chemistry 1, Lesson 47. Metal cations in solution have lost some or all of their valence electrons. They're well suited to accept electrons from other molecules. They are called Lewis acids, as they can accept a pair of electrons to form a bond with another molecule. And in the parlance of Lewis acids and bases, the molecule that is donating a pair of electrons is a Lewis base. But in the language of complex ions, we refer to the metal cation as the central metal atom and to the molecules bound to it as ligand molecules. This is called a coordination complex, or a complex metal ion. Metal ions have various sp and d atomic orbitals that can hybridize to participate in bonding with these ligand molecules. If the central metal atom comes from the lanthanides or actinides, the f orbitals can also participate. The number of bonding sites is determined in part as a trade-off between the size of the central metal ion and the size of the ligands. A large central ion allows for more coordination sites. Large ligands tend to limit the number of sites that can be involved in bonding. Many complexes form with small molecule ligands such as water or ammonia. Each ligand can form a single dative bond with a central atom. The key ligand feature is that there is an atom which has a lone pair of electrons available to be donated and shared with the central metal atom. For example, the nitrogen in ammonia and the oxygen in water have these available lone pairs. As in these examples, it is quite common for complexes formed with transition elements to have six ligands bound to them in an octahedral manner. Two or more types of ligands can sometimes be involved in bonding, such as with this cobalt complex with two acetate ligands and four water ligands. Another common ligand is the cyclopentadienyl C5H5- ion, which forms bonds through the electrons in its aromatic ring structure. Here's an example involving a central dimer of two iron ions, along with two cyclopentadienyl ions and four carbon monoxide molecules. Ligands such as water and ammonia, which are only able to form one bond, are called monodentate. The field is very broad and we could spend a lot of time just studying them. However, for our interest, we are going to look at some other interesting ligand molecules with very special structural features that allow them to form multiple bonds with a central atom. They are referred to as polydentate ligands. A bidentate ligand is one that can form two bonds with a metal center. A typical example is ethylene diamine. It's usually abbreviated as EN when discussing complex ions. Note how it has two NH2 sites that are held at just the right distance by the ethylene structure. As with ammonia, the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen can form a dative bond with a metal atom. We, he we see here the molecular structure of the tris, tris meaning three, tris ethylene diamine cobalt three complex ion. Compare it with the hexaamine cobalt-3 ion. The number of dative bonds is the same, and they are between the same type of atoms. The oxalate anion is another bidentate, bidentate ligand. Here three of them are bound to a central iron atom. When we compare a complex formed with monodentate ligands compared to polydentate ligands, how different are they? Are they very much the same? Well, compare these two nickel complexes, one with ammonia and the other with ethylene diamine. They both are formed with six dative nickel nitrogen bonds. The enthalpy change associated with those six bonds will be very similar. There will be slight differences because of the presence of the CH2 groups on the amine groups instead of a hydrogen, but the differences will be small. But look at this. Make up two solutions that are both formally 0.01 molar in nickel 2 plus. Make one of them 0.06 formal in ammonia and the other 0.03 formal in ethylene diamine. Let the complex form and reach equilibrium. Now I've chosen these concentrations for the ligands so that there would be an equal number of nitrogen bonding sites in the two solutions, since there are two such sites for each ethylene diamine, and also that there would be enough ligand to satisfy the stoichiometry of the reaction with the nickel ions. The enthalpy changes should be very similar. Do they reach the same equilibrium conditions? Well, here are the measured equilibrium constants. Using our numerical solving tools, we can find that the concentrations at, we can find the concentrations at equilibrium. In the case of the ammonia, we find that there are 3.2 millimolar of the complex ion and 6.8 millimolar of uncomplexed nickel ions. Remember, there is enough nickel and ammonia to react to reach the form the complex if they wanted to. For the ethylene diamine complex, the reaction has gone to completion. The complex is 10 millimolar in concentration and the small amount of free nickel remaining is about 10 to the minus 11 molar. The fraction of nickel that is present as the complex ion in the case of ethylene diamine complex is 
while the ammonia complex is only about 32% of the nickel in the complex form. What could be the difference? We know that gives energy at the driving force behind the progress of a reaction. Recall these defining mathematical relationships. When the standard Gibbs energy change in a reaction is related to the equilibrium constant. The Gibbs energy change for a reaction is related to the reaction quotient with the participant's activities at the moment under consideration and the standard Gibbs energy change. Do you understand the difference between the standard Gibbs energy and the Gibbs energy? That is a very important for you to understand uh, for your understanding of thermodynamics. Make sure you understand that Gibbs energy tells us in which direction the reaction is going to be evolving from the present situation. The standard Gibbs energy tells us the ultimate destination, which is, of course, equilibrium. What is most relevant for us right now is that the Gibbs energy change in the reaction is the enthalpy change minus the temperature times the entropy change. In comparing these two coordination complexes, the hexaamine versus trisethylene diamine, the enthalpy change, which is a result of the energy needed to break bonds and the energy released when bonds are formed, seems like it will be pretty much the same between both systems, the same number and the same kind of bonds are involved, the nitrogen nickel beta bond. Now these very different equilibrium conditions are not likely the result of any small difference in the enthalpy change. The difference has to be in the entropy. Chemical reactions occur when two reacting species collide with each other with sufficient energy and with an appropriate orientation. The hexa-ammonia species can get to the product by a sequence of six collisions, all of which have to be properly aligned. By contrast, the trisethylene diamine requires only three collisions. More significantly, when the first nitrogen forms its bond to the nickel atom, the bonding of the other end of the molecule is almost guaranteed since it's held at just the right distance by its very shape. So with one collision, we generally get two bonds formed. The entropy is much more favorable in the ethylene diamine case, so much so that the equilibrium constant is greater by 10 orders of magnitude. The polydentate ligands readily form strong bonds with the target metal ion center. There are tridentate ligands. Here's an example. The 147-trioxanane is a ligand which has been used to bind lithium ions. There are many tetradentate ligands, such as thalocyanine, with four nitrogen atoms forming bonds to many different metal ions. Here's another, nitrilotriacetic acid. It forms bonds with the three carboxylic oxygens as well as the central nitrogen atom. Here it is bound to a calcium ion along with bonds to three water molecules. There are pentadentate ligands such as ethylene diamine triacetic acid. Two nitrogen atoms and three carboxylic oxygens are the ligand binding sites. And there are many other ligands, large and small. But the most important one for us in this class is this hexadentate ligand, ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid. This molecule is widely used in industry and in food and laboratories, and we will use it to explore and learn about coordination compounds. We will commonly refer to this by its acronym of EDTA. Two amino nitrogens and four carboxyl oxygens can form six ligand metal bonds to a central atom and produces an octahedrally bound complex. This is how the EDTA molecule wraps itself around a central metal ion. And like the bidentate ethylene diamine molecule, which creates a much more stable coordination complex than with the monodentate ligands, this hexadentate ligand molecule creates very stable complexes. We will use this as a model system to look at coordination complexes.